Hello everyone, this is Stas and welcome to my new Touch Designer tutorial and today we're gonna talk about vector fields the textures that defines the velocity of a particles so the way how particles moves around in two dimensions because uh, one of my previous tutorials was about uh, the particles in three dimensions when the sine distance function or ray march geometry defines the movement of the particles and particles e either stock to either stick to the surface of a ray, ray marched uh, geometry or slide along it and here everything happens in two dimensions so the looks a little bit different but the idea stays the same actually this example you looking right now it's uh, very very similar because here I have an SGF function two-dimensional SGF so it's a lot of math that uh, describes how particles should move so the, it is a math that describes this pattern but uh, and of course you could uh, go to Inigo Kile's site to look at uh, two-dimensional distance functions and create your own uh, function from these formulas but uh, probably it's not you wanna do especially if you kind of new to GLSL or if you don't like the text coding and maybe you prefer to use a texture and the gradient for calculating the vector field and that's exactly what we're gonna do today uh, here if you if I stop uh, my noise uh, let's look at this gradient and let's say we want to calculate our a vector field in a way that uh, our particles moves uh, from the brighter spot to the darker spots so uh, it moves toward here like this in a dark area it moves to the even darker area in the bright area it goes to the dark so what we need to do is to calculate how our gradient changes and then use this as uh, our velocity and to clarify it a little bit more I have a helpful gel cells let me turn off my feedback loop and let me turn on uh, the noise so here's our noise from here and let's turn on this gel cell arrows the arrows show where particles should move uh, and as you can see it moves from a brighter area to the darker area and that's what we're gonna do today as you could see this uh, network and I'm gonna share this with my Patreon supporters and this network is a pretty complex because here I tested a lot of different ideas and different parameters how to calculate the scale of a particle how to create the color and etc etc so to make everything simple I made another example and I'm gonna share it with everyone so you could right now download this example from a link below and to follow me because we're not gonna recreate all of this from scratch because it will require I don't know maybe an hour or maybe even more so instead I'm gonna explain everything that what's happening here basically this network uh, consists of uh, three steps first we need to create our vector fields then we need to calculate the particle parameters like position mostly because I'm using the constant scale and constant color here and then we just render it as uh, our favorite 
instancing. It's just the typical instancing. It's not to use any Jela cell material. It's just a constant material and an instancing for the positions. So we're gonna mostly discuss these two steps. As I said, I want to use the gradient as a drive, as a source for my particle movements. Uh, so let's open this gradient code here. The code is very simple, but I want to explain it to you even more. Let me try to connect my device. Is it working? Let's check. Oops, 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 oops. Okay. Yeah, it seems like it's working. Let's say we have a gradient here and uh, we sample, for example, our particle is in this dot, in this position. And uh, so to calculate the, how the, the gradient is different, the difference in, in the gradient, we're gonna took, uh, we're gonna sample one pixel from the left, one pixel from the right, one pixel from the down, and one pixel from the up. So let's call it, uh, because our in Jela cell, the coordinates goes like this, from zero to one. So uh, it would be our x1, one, x2, y1 and y2 and uh, what we want to know is the difference between x1 minus oops sorry uh, minus x2 and y1 minus y2 and it would be our vector and let me guess the values, just, um, I don't know, maybe it's something like 0 0.2 minus 0. Point, I don't know, 0 0.5. And the y values on the verticals, it's almost uh, the same. This one is just a little bit more bright. So let's say it's uh, zero point, I don't know, five. And this one is zero point 45. So w when we calculate everything, we got minus zero point three and zero point zero five. And this is our velocity vector. And if we're gonna add this vector to our point we get so it's minus on the x side so we go into this direction but it's plus on the y so we go to this direction and we are gonna straight to our dark spot so here is our algorithm explanation and let's see how it's uh, done in code how it's done in code here I have a very helpful super little function that just to sample our texture only R channel. So actually we need only just not 16-bit uh, for RGBA. We only need R channel, but maybe you would use instead of noise or ramps, maybe you would use your camera or everything. So feel free to use RGBA. But this uh, gradient will use only R channel. If you, of course, you could redefine this uh, function if you want. So here we took our, we calculate our X position. So we use our current X and we add a little bit, a little of shift and, and we minus X minus some little shift 
and the same for the y. So x minus x2, y min my minus y2. All right, and for every pixel, we calculate this uh, gradient vector and output it. And for the blue channel, we output zero. And what is our U shift? U shift is calculated like this. Let's say we want to calculate one pixel from the, so let's say this distance equals to one pixel, every single one. So because uh, in GLSL, in a texture function, this texture function is an interpolation and all UV goes from zero to one, we need to set this shift not as one, but one or one pixel divided by the width uh, or the height. So this is exactly that's this described here. So one divided by width and one divided by height. And actually this um, texture could be any resolution, it could be any aspect ratio, it doesn't matter. And all calculation will be the same. And to visualize it a little bit better, I could just use a math and multiply it by 10, so everything is calculated and it looks like this. Okay, and this would be our current velocity. For the position, for the default position, let me turn this, uh, let's not use feedback, let's use a render. As our default position would be just a, a square from zero to one. And this is a very, very simple GLSL. <laughs> it's actually almost a default, so we just use a VUVST. So here's our default position. And this uh, two top parameters is a noise. This noise is created between zero and one. And in the math, I re rearrange it to five to 15. And then I will use this as an age for my particles. So my particles would age in a different times and we will see the algorithm later. Uh, one more thing about this gradient vector. Maybe you know that there is a top, top node called the slope, slope top, that do almost the same. If we set here the red as horizontal red, green as horizontal, uh, oh, sorry, green as vertical red, blue as zero and alpha is one, and the zero point is zero, and maybe adjust the strength a little bit, I don't know, like five, or maybe even two. It will create almost the same gradient. The reason why I'm not using the slope, the first reason is because I forgot about this, and the second reason, when I start to test it, I found that sometimes the slope creates some artifacts. Uh, it's uh, not very often, usually the slope works without the artifacts, but here is um, my screenshot of an example where my gradient vector GLSL works fine, while the slope create these ugly artifacts that of course will affect the velocity of the particles. And we don't want to, and we don't want that. And also the algorithm is super simple and it's nice to understand it. Maybe you would like even to add something to it. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, let me think, maybe for example, you want the gradient affect the velocity only if the uh, difference between two spots is greater than some value. So if we have some uh, contrast threshold, it would affect as a velocity, and if it's smooth gradient, it wouldn't affect. Or maybe you come up with some other algorithm. So that's why I'm not using slope. And also in the slope, we don't have very handy stuff. 
here I have we have how to extend UV. So what's going on on outside of the borders. And if you change it to some different, maybe it will be different, especially in the, on the borders. Because uh, again, if we see here, let's, uh, <coughs> let's say this, uh, this point is on the edge of our screen, then we couldn't sample this X, for example, edges here, we couldn't sample X1 because it's outside of the edge. And this parameters tells us what we're gonna use instead. For example, we could hold the value, so everything outside keep the same value as a edge, or we could zero or repeat or mirror it. I'll set it to repeat. All right, so we don't need this. And let's go to our main jello cell, our super simple particle function, particle system. First of all, we need our parameters that define the width and the height. And it could be uh, it could be the same as our gradient, but of course, if you use the camera or something, it would be more handy if you use a different uh, resolution for the particle systems. Because, for example, maybe you want only 10,000 particles. And if you use, uh, even here, I have much more particles. If I use the same resolution, it would be 25,000 particles, which is maybe too much. Let's just check it. Yeah, and it's become slower. Not super slow, but a little bit slower. So that's why I'm, I'm using a different resolution. And I set res uh, and I set resolution here, or where I set it? Oh, I set it here as UV. And, uh, and yeah, and that's it. And here I'm using input of a first input. Okay, uh, what's going on? What's going on here? Let's dive in. Um, as an input, uh, okay, yeah, as an input, I had three inputs. First, my first or my zero input is a current particle position and age, because I'm keeping age as an alpha channel. Second input is the default position, so when you hit the when you hit the reset button, it's the default position. And the third input is our velocity, or actually it's a velocity sum. And I'll explain it a little bit later. So what's going on? Uh, for the position, we sample our position and the store, because our position is just X and Y, it's two dimensional. We use the red and green channel as our position and the alpha channel as our age. And for the velocity, I sample the third input, but not on VUVST, so not on the current position, but on this position, in the position of a particle. Why is that? Because, uh, let me turn on, because if I set it to VUVST, then my uh, particle would always... Uh, so th then this particle, for example, particle zero, 00, would always get the velocity from here, no matter which position it is. But uh, if instead we set a position here, then if our position uh, if our position is zero zero 
it took a velocity from the pixel 0, 0. If our position is 0 0.5, 0 0.1, we took a particle from a position, we took a velocity from a position 0 0.5, 0 0.1. I hope it's clear. I hope it's clear. Um, <laughs> So, aging. Uh, the aging uh, acts very simple. We have our age. Here we have our noise. So, our age is between 5 and 15 for different particles. And we have a parameter aging x and aging y. Every step, so every frame, we decrease the age of a particle to the parameter age x which is 0 0.01 and we do it until the aging parameter goes below equals or below zero and then if it's equals or below zero we sample the position and age from the input 2 which is our default age position so our particle reborn from here now uh, we add the velocity to the position but not uh, just the velocity we multiply our velocity uh, two actually three times why do we need to do this because uh, uh, they it calculates uh, every frame so it calculates uh, 60 times per second and if every time we add a little bit of velocity it will end up with very huge amount of velocity even though the values here is quite small. So that's why we multiply our, our velocity with two parameters. First of all I use this apps time step seconds uh, which is 1 divided by FPS and multiply it to this and I also use a second multiplicator because you could use only one but uh, for example 0 0.1 but if you want to oh no sorry no, not here 0 0.1 for example but if you're gonna change this parameter a little bit you need to 0 0.2 it, it's not super easy to do it's it's not convenient so that's why I'm uh, oh yeah that's why I'm used two multiplicators this one is like say it doing its uh, main multiplication and you usually need to change only this one this to check how much of a uh, velocity you want and the third parameter here is for our, it's, uh, as you could see, these two parameters with a velocity add to the position and then we multiply the velocity for the third parameter. What is this? We're gonna save our position to our buffer number zero, so this this operator we set uh, two color buffers so here is our position and age and on the second buffer we store our velocity and here all of my velocity equals to zero because my parameter here equals to zero if I set it to 0 0.5 it suddenly appear and what and how are we gonna use this? We're gonna use this to add this our current velocity to our default velocity. So here is uh, addition. You could choose the different operation. I'm just adding the current velocity with my older velocity. So my particles uh, wouldn't go instantly in new direction. It uh, keeps a little bit of inertia 
from the previous position and from the previous direction and previous velocity. Sometimes you want to do this and then you set how much of inertia should uh, you should have and sometimes you want to particle instantly change in position to the new velocity and then you keep it zero. Actually, I prefer it to keep it zero most of the time. So, uh, and yeah, and it fits here into feedback and we use the default velocity, which is uh, zero. We add the current velocity and it calculates everything. And that's it. Very, well, not a super simple, but I think it's something like a lower intermediate level of a code. And it could be one of probably the first particle system you could wrote yourself as an exercise. If you learn in GLSL. Next, uh, we need to feedback our position to our input. And I'm using the feedback top here. Let me turn off again this background. And I'm using here a feedback. But before feedback, you could uh, add any of the operators. One of the operators I like to use is the borders. Because uh, Mm. Oh, yeah, 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 uh, sorry. Uh, one also very important uh, thing about, about this position. Because our texture is sampling between 0 and 1, our position uh, should be between 0 and 1. That's why... Uh, so everything outside of uh, 0 and 1 would be discarded and then wouldn't be sampled as a velocity. That's why you could use, for example, a borders. So the minimum value is zero, the maximum value is one, and what you're gonna do on the borders? You could just clamp it or loop it or zigzag it and the effect would be a little bit different. Especially, but here, yeah, you could see, here is a like bouncing if I'm set it to loop it goes into that direction it disappears and appears from this side and uh, if I set it to zigzag it's also different and you could turn it off as well and the sum of the particles could fly away so that's why I'm using the borders but you could use the different operators and that's how you could create your own and how you could adjust your particle system very easily even if you don't know and if you don't want to do anything with GLSL you could simply for example add something here like noise noise is a good choice yeah, it's too much of a noise and let's change the pixel format and uh, let's make our noise very, very tiny. So as you can see, the noise is added as well. It should be super tiny. Or maybe instead of noise, you could, you want to add something different. Or maybe you want to add noise here. Let me cut, let me... Oops. Mm -hmm. Let me say... Let me add noise here. And you, so you could add noise to the velocity or you could add noise to the position or you could uh, use uh, almost any of other operators to do something. I don't know, you could even do something super strange. Like, I don't know what, what would go on if I change the... 
Yeah, probably it wasn't. Uh, <laughs> it's not a good idea. It's not working. So don't use HSV adjust. But you could use, I don't know, let's say math. Let's, for example, keep the horizontal position the same, but uh, multiply uh, green position to oops, too much. So you could stretch it in Uh, okay, I hope you got it. <laughs> oh, it should be between zero, yeah. I hope you got it that you could uh, use di different operators and change and look how it looks and do something between, between this null that goes back into feedback loop. What else could you do? Of course, you could change the color of a particles. Uh, the color of co because it's uh, instancing this uh, color parameter should be the same resolution as your JLSL. But let's see what else you could do. It's probably simpler to see here when I'm already I did it. For example, here I'm using a movie file in with HSV adjust, but you, it could be a live input from a video. You could, as I said, add a noise to the particles and some border limits. You could experiment with all of these gradients and set different gradients. And also don't forget that you could define defined the gradients not as uh, defined the vector fields not as gradients but uh, as in two-dimensional uh, vector field two-dimensional sdf by the way this example is uh, from here is a field play is the same function i just did a little bit of conversion but it's as you can see it looks almost the same well, I feed some parameters, but it's almost the same. And this is a project, you could uh, read about it. You could read about it on a GitHub and get some different examples and maybe try to explore all of this. So, some other ideas. Uh, here I'm on JLSL, I'm storing only the particle position, age and the velocity. And I'm here I'm using the age as a scale. But you could uh, improve this JLSL code and also store here some, for example, scale. Maybe scale should be calculated from a velocity somehow. Or maybe you want to and the, uh, calculate the color inside jello cell and made uh, velocity uh, be affected by the affect the color maybe fast moving particles should be red and slow moving particles should be blue or something and so on and so on and so on so i hope uh, that will ex inspire you to do experiments with vector fields with two-dimensional vector fields and uh, we'll see you next time and don't forget to subscribe and hit like button if you like it hit dislike button if you dislike this tutorial and download this example file or if you want to support me and download this file you can go to my patreon and check different stuff I have there. That's it for today. See you next time and bye bye.